welcome everyone and this workshop is about a immerse learning and i have as little knowledge about it as i can possibly have so i am excited to be in this workshop as much as everyone else is and with that i will let richard and jock here take over and all the best cool thank you um welcome you you i see some people want to want to clap maybe clap now um and we can practice at the end we can have the applause again and it's practice so regardless of what you're feeling at the end um it can be a nice rousing one um my name's richard me um i used to be one of the heads of learning at construct education there's a, a lot of our construct people here so it's it's great to see you all terrifying and exciting um to see the people i used to work with in in the room um i'm now a a learning con learning design consultant working out of a um out of a firm which i call myself as the learning team so when you email me you're emailing richard at the learning team um so it's it's your learning team it's it's yeah uh, our experts being me um supporting you i'm working primarily for an organization called our daily bread um you may or may not be familiar with them maybe your grandparents had our daily bread devotionals in their bathrooms um what when you were growing up um that's where it came out of but now our daily bread university is where we're working as developing a diploma for majority world pastors um who either haven't had access to to training or the only training they've had access to is not really appropriate or applicable to them in their situation so how how do we train them to be able to work in in their context i've got two little girls um if i ramble at any point lose my words it's their fault um yeah as of 2 o'clock this morning um yeah and, and i i approach this as a maker i am someone i i see what other people are doing i see what's out there and i think surely surely we can do that too um surely i can figure that out um give me enough time and chat gpt and we can do we can work magic um but yeah that's that's me jack over to you thanks richard um hello it's wonderful to be here and to see a lot of familiar faces and i also just want to say thank you to everyone in the crowd who also contributed to some of the products that we've developed a uh, special thank you to andre and insha um yeah so it's wonderful to be here i'm a learning architect at construct education and i am a education nerd and i like creating things yeah so what we are going to show you today are some immersive learning products that we've developed and how we can match immersive learning tools to a set of requirements and um yeah let's get started try again try again can we go to the next slide Okay so we are going to start today's session with an icebreaker. We would like this to be as interactive as possible. So um we would like you to turn to your neighbor and discuss some immersive learning products that you have possibly designed in your organization or any kind of opportunities for immersion that you see within your organizational context. Um we can just take 2 minutes and then we can going to reconvene and start the presentation. Thanks. I also have a clicker if it's uh, as a port as if it's as a result of a battery. I have also got that. Another clicker. Yeah. Okay, let's just try your backup with me. So rather than by mistake leaving shop and stuff in your Yeah, I 
I know my clicker works with certain. Yeah, I think. Are you connected to the brick laptop, obviously? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I need a gong like in the previous previous talk. Or, or do, the, do, do the Sunday school thing of if you hear my voice clap once, if you hear my voice clap twice. Um, so while we're trying to make sure they've got a, one of the three clickers that works, um, we're, we're keen to hear some, some of the feedback from, from you. So I, I'm very aware from my teaching days that as a teacher in a room of 10 or 20 or 40, I was always not the, never smarter than the room. Right, so I'm keen to hear what your experiences are from, so what your discussions were at the table, but also a little bit of, of where some of the people in the room are from. So I'd like to open it up for you to say, well, this is the discussion we had, um, or this is a, a something that, that was said, um, but obviously introducing yourself saying, I'm so-and-so from such and such a company, this is the discussion that we had. Um, and feel free to volunteer people around you or, or stick your own <laughs> hand up. <laughs> yes. So um, while we discussed two ideas, I'll just share the first one and then we'll pick up for the first word because by the time we talk that she was still sharing what she was learning at North Crisis from North Crisis University here in South Africa for the past of this year. So the one that uh, we are currently working on, uh, as we are, since the Native AI has been introduced, so the university mm. has been requested us instructional designers to start running workshops on generative AI. So we have facilitated a two-day workshop last month, which was the first one was basically just on AI literacy, uh, so mm. educating lect uh, lecturers or academics on what is AI and all of that. And then the second one was on designing prompts. So the opportunities that come with that is that all currently still they are just trying to find ways to block it. And I don't think anyone mm. can block what is happening. So uh, basically now, when there are the opportunities that come with all these workshops, when lecturers are more equipped, then they will see it as a code design uh, system than as a track. Mm. Uh, and basically they can also interpret AI tools and assessments and everything they do. Mm. Yes. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> So I work as an instructional designer from Northwest University. So basically I was just sharing with her that I'm currently working on two uh, qualifications, nursing qualifications. So I was basically explaining to her the structure of how I'm going to approach the, you know, the, 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 the two programs. So the, the first phase, the two programs worked with an a, a, the academic developer, which they looked at the curriculum said they said the module outcomes so my job comes in on ensuring there's alignment on module outcomes study unit learning outcomes uh, alignment on instructional material uh, activities and what uh, activities assessment and creating we 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 can we have what is this a frameworks that we use so the framework is kind, some kind of a, a, a 
a, a structure or a framework that we are going to use on an LMS. So some lectures approach their teaching or teaching strategy having a, a what is this, a pre-activity pre -activ pre of pre-class preparation during class and after class. Mm. And then others, they approach their teaching in, in terms of topic based. So I'm there as a guiding person to ensure that the correct information is there, the, the students are guided in the right way then, and also their learning experience is improved and also there is guidance, you know, you don't, you don't just, uh, you know, uh, post a video on the elements, but you need to have uh, what is the instructions, what, is, what are the students expected to do with that video, what do they need to learn from it. Mm. Also with activities to ensure what uh, you are, all the, the learning materials, what should stu a student learn from those particular learning materials. It will be a slide, that watch this, there's this slide and, you know, reflect on what you learned. So yeah, basically that is what I do. Thank you. Cool, thank you. And so in medical stuff, there's so many use cases for all sorts of, of immersion. Um, AI, I know my learners, while we, while we think majority will I mean WhatsApp, you got access straight away to, to free AI. Um, so if they're working on their smartphone, then it's a very quick copy paste um, from a question on the, on the LMS into, the, into AI. And so we can't stop it. How do we embrace it and, and teach them? Awesome. Anybody else? So, um, David from Coder Level Up, a local South African not-for-profit, uh, but we work at the Raspberry Pi Foundation to help start coding clubs for 7 to 17 year olds. Um, some success. But what was really interesting in our conversation was what is immersion and non-technological immersion, like unplugged coding when a child is telling another child to walk around. That's an incredibly immersive experience. Um, so that was kind of interesting and um, Benito was saying how immersion is everything, but that's engagement in the online website and everything like that. So, so which technologies do we mean when we say immersion or how do we create immersion was quite interesting to come out of our conversation. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Who else? Is that on? There we go. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be here. My name is Harvey Trent. I'm based in the northeast England, um, just short of the border between Scotland and England. And um, I own an immersive solutions development company. So we have all the software developers, coders, artists, uh, user experience designers that develop your typical solutions. So if there's any questions that somebody wants to ask me, you're welcome to. We've been doing it since 2013. It originated in George. So solid South African. And uh, so it's grown to the point where we've actually expanded into um, the Middle East and into the UK and Europe. And then we decided to make the head office in Newcastle. That's where I'm based full time now. Um, but some of our developers are still sitting in Cape Town, South Africa and George. Um, but <clears throat> I think just to clarify, if there are things you want to clarify, what's good about questions I possibly can add today is that we've actually taken learners to the workplace so this is where the actual immersive technologies that are learned through the institutions have now been applied. In other words, where are the designers getting their work, the UX designers, where are the software developers working physically and how they link. So it's the, it's the bridge between institutions and the workplace that we've had to deal with. And then I've built um, various different ed tech solutions, which are platforms which are using immersive technology to teach versus books, it's just basically the two spectrums on that. So it bridges that between books, LMS, um, experiential learning, and then tactile using your, your devices, phones. So I have examples if anyone wants to see what they're about. I've worked with Aston Martin. I've worked with mining in Africa. Um, okay, so, yeah. so, so maybe that's a conversation for a bit later. Yeah, cool, thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Welcome to join us. There were, I think there were two hands over the side. That's probably all we actually have time for. Um, and then we'll move on to, to the next phase. Hi, um, my name is Insha. I'm a learning designer at Construct Education. Um, in terms of what we can create, um, I was lucky enough to do an immersive learning course recently, and we had a project that we were building, and I think what really excited me was, was being able to use it to, to help um, 
to, to kind of create um, avatar-based learning. So it was we used avatars to, my project was based on trying to use avatars for interview, interview ready skills. And um, it was, yeah, it, 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 it was really awesome to, to build an entire kind of program to, and, and see the potential that you could, you, you could help someone by using these kind of bots and trying to program them in a way that they can, um, they can help um, people in, in that way. So yeah, just wanted to share that. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. I think we had one more hand on that side. If not, then it's fine. I'll hand over to Jacques and we'll carry on. Cool. Thank you, Richard. And thank you, everyone, for contributing to the conversation. Um, so next, I would just like to situate immersive learning as a solution to problems that client may face. And it's the best way to approach it is to view it through a business lens as well as an educational lens. So firstly, we can view problems as either being a simple problem or a complex problem. In literature, we refer to complex problems as wicked problems. An example of a simple problem might be material in nature, a budgetary uh, problem, whereas a wicked problem would be more systemic and complex. And this can be an organizational issue that an immersive learning experience solves. So a common business problem is scalability. Often it is not financially feasible to facilitate on-site training, and immersive learning serves as a solution to that. And the other problem is a practice of critical sk skills in a safe environment. So this really involves soft skill training as well as hard skill training. Soft skill training involves, for example, verbal communication skills that needs to be practiced in an environment where students can feel free to fail and to practice and improve their communication skills. Whereas hard skill training can involve, for example, surgical procedures in which if the learner would make a mistake, it would not have any devastating consequences. In addition to that, immersive learning also serves educational problems. One thing that we would like to enable for learners is to give them a sense of, I have done this before. A good educational experience enables the transference of knowledge and skills to real world practices, whereas a great educational experience situates the learners within authentic practices and gives them an opportunity to improve their understanding and skill set. And lastly, we would like to develop a flexible performance capability amongst our learners. What this means is we're not just looking for job ready skills, but we want to get learners to be able to think and act flexibly with what they know so that they can apply their skills in a range of organizational contexts. Thank you. So in our working with, with clients, we, we found that, and, and this is a bit of the process of how we've come to thinking through a bit of the framework that we think through when now we're sitting with the clients, thinking what is it that we actually need to use here for this problem, for, for this so, um, to come up with a solution. And we'll, we'll be playing with that later. Um, so going through a bit of the story of how we've gotten there. And some of the key restrictions that we, we often find. So we've got time restrictions. Obviously, a client will say, well, this needs to get done. Um, and needs to get done, it, it should be out last week. Um, so let's get it done next week. Um, the other side of the issue is some clients will say, well, actually, when it's done, it's done. Um, it needs to be perfect. Um, but we, we don't actually have a launch date. That's flexible. Budget restrictions. We've got two, two elements of budget. Some of the tools you're working with, are you, you pay once off, and then you, you, you apply it to an LMS or, or put it wherever you want to put it. And there's a, the cost for the tool. For others, there's a cost for the tool and to, to rent it per, per seat that's using it. So there's upfront costs, there's development costs, and then there's maintenance costs. All of those need to be chat, chatted through before we can come up with what is this solution going to be. And then obviously you also get those clients who say, well, we, we don't have a budget here because we, we need to know what the perfect solution is. And once we've got the perfect solution, then we can solve budgets, um, which is always a red flag. That's a whole other problem to, to talk about. Um, end user infrastructure restrictions. So we've got some clients that say, well, we, we've already bought VR headsets. First clients f for me who say, well, we may or may not have a smartphone. Um, and it's two very different problems to, to try and deal with. 
technical abilities within the team here. The team, so, some of you were aware you're, you're coming from an organization where like, you are the organization. Um, some of you, you're coming from an organization where you're saying, we're going to hire in a team to come and work with us. And some of you are that team that's going to get hired in. Um, here we're talking about what is the whole team. Um, and the technical abilities on the team change what you're able to do. Can you custom dev things? Can you, can you create new, new solutions? Or do you need to find something off the shelf that's a five minute plug and play? And, and figure it out. So, so we need to ask those questions. And then policy things, what accessibility, um, what are the accessibility needs, what data protection regulations, or, or do we even have those in, in this case? Um, all along the way, we wanna make sure that we're creating experiences that are immersive. Um, part of our backstory and some of the clients. Um, and here what you, you'll see is part of our thinking was highlighted by you always get those students in the class or in, in a course that come to the answers before you've gotten to that part of the, part of the session. Um, had a conversation earlier today about the Harry Potter phenomenon, where a person will sit and they'll read Harry Potter, now they're walking around the, the real world and they're seeing Harry Potter and analogies from Harry Potter and they're like everywhere because they've become so immersed in just this text on a page. Um, and very aware that, that immersion isn't just about putting on a VR headset, now you think you're in, in this other world. And sometimes that isn't even immersion, sometimes that's a barrier to immersion if it's uncomfortable and it hurts and your eyes don't, don't work so well with the screen. Um, so immersion starts right from, it's, it's an imagination exercise, right? And so what are the things we can do to draw a person into that imagination? Um, and sometimes it'll be VR, sometimes it'll be a story, sometimes it'll be something else. Um, and so we, we had a medical device compliance um, auditing firm that we worked with. And, and for them, initially, this, the solution, it was compliance training. And so edX, it's got some, some images, some videos maybe, some GIFs that were, that were great. And the team that know who I'm talking about are now chatting to each other. Um, and they came to us with the, the blue sky thing of well, what, our, what could we do because we don't want to fly people around the world to, to go and have to fly them to get them all together at a warehouse. So what could we do? And the solution we pitched um, that was too expensive for them at the time um, that was one of those blue sky things was, well, we could create a, a VR warehouse and all the things that they need to do are in this, in this world. Um, and you, you walk through, you can, you can reuse the room, so it's a little bit more cost effective, but you, you are there. Um, and Jacques will talk to some other solutions that we've done for clients a little bit later that are similar to that. For salespeople and American Sign Language skills, as well as just consultants and our own consultants, um, we've done work where it's, so Go React was one of the tools where you can, it's, it's not fully immersive, you've got a video that you're working to, and then feedback isn't immediate. Um, and then MetaSkills is one that we've used, and Jacques's got some others that we've used, um, where you're able to create, it's a, an AI-powered avatar that you're talking to. And so now, all of a sudden, it, it feels like a real person, and some of the feedback from that has been, well, that was the best discovery call I've ever had, um, because this person under, understood what was going on, and, and they, they were with you, and you got to practice and ask all the questions and write down all the things and, and do what you would do then in the real world. And, and so it's the, the imagination thing that takes you there. Um, government communications professionals, um, where also using native edX functions, um, where we did things around, and, and Andre is one of the key guys who's been working with them, some really cool scenarios, um, not using VR or anything, but taking you through a, a sequence of responding to, to real world situations and thinking, now, now me as a communications professional, how do, I, how do I respond to this? What do I do? Um, for more premium stuff, what conversations we'd had with them um, was around creating immersive world experiences where you could go to a place and then like, now walk around in the place where this crisis is happening. You can see, maybe see some of the people. Um, or um, there's a cool tool called um, virtual speech where you're able to put, a, put somebody in the location where they'll be developed delivering a speech um, with feedback, with stuff saying, you're talking too fast, you're talking too slow, feel free to tell me if I'm talking too fast. Um, and where, where you can actually be in, in a 3D version or a 360 video version of the room that you'll be delivering your speech in, or a room where you'll be giving the press conference, and you can practice and get feedback on that. So when you get there, you actually have been there before, um, although you've never been there before, um, which is the, for me, that's the holy grail. Um, regardless of whether it's a story or whether it's a 360 something, it's all of these. It's how do we get for this client with the budget that they've got and the timeline that we've got and the, the skills available, how do we get as close to that feeling of I've been there before, I have done this before, and I can do this now? Um, that's the goal. So for me, um, 
my current, my current experience is one, one of the potential partners I had a conversation with tur turned around and showed me while I was chatting to him via WhatsApp. Um, wasn't this exact group of people, but the, it was the, the people he'd just been training that day um, sitting under the trees outside and said, sometimes actually this is where we do our training. And so, so my, my learners are sometimes going to be the pastor who's working with the people under the tree, taking them through Bible study materials. Sometimes it'll be the pastor in, in this church. Um, sometimes maybe it'll be this guy as well, super tech savvy, um, South America, maybe less tech savvy, um, out in rural Kenya. And got to try and think, how, how do we create experiences that are as immersive as possible for all of these people um, within one learning experience? Um, really, we're trying to get people to to, to a point where they can gain mastery of like, leadership skills and Bible study skills and pastoral skills, um, at, and to, to a point where they can go and apply those in theater. Um, so, so, so I feel like I have counseled this person before, or, or this is a person I know, this is a problem I know, this is a process I've been through. Um, and so some of the key things we've had to think through, obviously, is sometimes people have a smartphone, sometimes they won't. Sometimes people will have a MacBook Pro. Um, at the same time, a huge amount of people work on WhatsApp as just a native, that's, that's what they use. North America, some people say, WhatsApp, what, what's WhatsApp? Um, why, why would we use that? Um, and that's one of the organizational problems we need to get through because our key tech infrastructure is all in the USA and we need to, to work through that as well. Um, and then they, they may or may not have internet at any, any given point in time. So a VR solution isn't going to work, right? Um, and a lot of other, so high quality video um, is probably not gonna work for consistently for everybody and what we're trying to make sure is that there's a consistent um, unified solution. So one of the things that, that we've come to is that the base of immersion is good narrative. It's good story. And so what we've come to is how do we build an experience that is, that is rooted in story partly also because majority world, um, a lot of the cultures are cultures that are very narrative based. So we learn through stories, so we need to write good stories. Good scenarios, so here, um, you won't see the whole scenario, but our man was juggling multiple responsibilities, paying school fees, et cetera, et cetera. This is a spirituality course. Um, and here, you're taken into our, our man's life, and this scenario grows <coughs> through the course. So you don't just meet him once off, but now you, you work with him, you walk a journey with him, and then you walk a journey with some other people as well as you, as you go through. Um, and and then in that, so while you, as you're walking, walking his journey with him, you're also walking your own journey. So you might not be, be doing the same things. You, you meet Rahul, who's a pastor in India now. Um, and you walk his journey with him through elements of this course. The idea is that as we're going through, you're seeing, you're, you're getting to know some people. They feel like real people, and you get drawn into their stories, and your story gets drawn into that. And through that, you, not everybody's going to look like you or come from where you come from. And sometimes that's beneficial. So you get to, to play with somebody else's context and test skills there and then bring them into your own. But some of the people do look like you and they do sound like you and they do have names that sound like your names. So it's trying to, very diverse, very storied, rich experience. Um, so that when people come to, to their context, they can see partly like this is, this is what my context is, but also it's, you sometimes see your context by seeing something different. So you get immersed in something different, so now you understand yours. Um, it's what we're, what we're trying to do. Some, we've added mentor support as well, so it's a real person who, who knows the, the field. Some of what we've been trying to do also, and so it's building towards so narrative base. Um, there's, because WhatsApp is, is used by everybody, um, there's WhatsApp tools, so engaging with WhatsApp vendors where you can put a, a support person in their pockets. Um, also, you can then on the fly change it to be scenarios. So now it's no longer a, an AI-powered um, mentor. Now it's a, an AI-powered congregant who's got a problem that I need to deal with. And you can, you can update and change it. And WhatsApp, it's natural. They're going to be WhatsApping people. So if we can't do voice things, then we can do that. Um, and then the other thing we've been playing with, um, this is my favorite, it's custom HTML things that are very low, low cost to run. Um, especially if you've got the, the time and development skills to, to build your own um, open source um, LLM, and then, then you can run it for free with no API cost even. 
but if, when it's custom, you can make it look like the platform as well. So, you, so you're not taking somebody out of the platform once, or into a different tool. It's, it's the same text input thing that they've had before, except now the response is personalized to them. Do it again, and the, res the response is personalized to them again. Um, Chatbots that we can play around with. This one is for a contextual theology course, a, a proof of concept where you can ask questions, and at the end you say evaluate, and it says, did you ask all the right questions you should have been asking to understand the context of the writer of this piece of, of literature? Um, and then because it's custom, you can play around with those buttons. So rather than evaluate, it can say, well, submit to the LMS. Or you can say, send it to WhatsApp with my, with my mentor, or it can email it to me or print it out so I can take it and have a conversation with. So it, it then says, it's the same learning experience, same text on page, but now it's personalized a little bit to me. Um, and then we can, we can play with that and do all sorts of things, micro skills and practice counseling skills. We can do all sorts. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing there at, at a very, trying to be low cost, low bandwidth, easy access to technology. Um, Jacques has something else. Oh, thank you, Richard. Um, and just like contract education, we've also been developing AI-powered formative assessments and learning experiences. And I think one of the apprehensions that a lot of people have is that they are skeptical about the reliability of the output of these applications. And we can, however, intentionally design these applications to improve reliability by setting up the necessary parameters and configuring a systems role that provides the application with instructions to generate the required output. But that's a whole discussion in itself. Next, we're going to discuss a solution that we um, provided for one of our clients, which involved a global accessible hospital design course. And they had a business problem which we had to resolve. The business problem was that on-site training was highly expensive and they required a solution that was more cost effective. So what we did was we, um, one of our uh, media staff members flew over to the States and took 360 photographs of the hospital setting so that uh, we could simulate that experience and they could gain insights into hospital design in the comfort of the space that they usually would frequent. And this was a major cost saver for the organization that we provided the solution for. They recently also approached us to, for some VR and AI powered education technology solutions. And we further built on the solution that we provided for them um, to save other additional costs that were usually um, implemented on site. So firstly, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to go through some different types of immersive learning experiences and the associated learning technologies. So firstly, a display experience, demonstration. So a display experience essentially refers to a virtual tour experience that can be accessed through a desktop or a mobile device. So firstly, this was the original experience that we developed for them. This was facilitated through H5P 360 virtual tours. And essentially, it highlighted key components that made up the hospital design. Then we looked at how we could make this experience accessible through mobile devices and took a mobile first development <coughs> approach. We found Articulate Storyline 360 very useful for this. And then we also provided them with some custom modeling <coughs> options. So this particular one was developed in Blender and exported to Unity. And then we try to, then we had to, then we thought it would be beneficial if we could create a full learning cycle within a 360 virtual environment, as opposed to only have a demonstration of key concepts open in the 360 environment. So we integrated AI powered components, learning components within the 360 virtual tour space. This was done through using Cloud Pano as well as uh, Pickaxe AI. <coughs> Pickaxe AI is great because it helps you to develop formative assessments in which you can set up parameters to improve the reliability of the output. So it will contain all your standard components, such as the systems role, which provides instructions for the AI model. It included additional parameters, such as a hyperparameter meter, which essentially 
um, which essentially allows you to adjust for reliability of the output. And then you could also configure a knowledge base in which you can integrate your curriculum and required readings into the application from which it draws from, as well as a knowledge base relevance threshold, which determines how much it should draw from the open domain and how much it should draw from the readings. Through doing this, the reliability of output was highly predictable and aligned with the curriculum. Then we looked at how we can create virtual reality experiences. So one of the, we um, looked at the virtual reality experiences that we looked at were 360 photos, so we could repurpose and reuse the photos that we took. And then we also looked at 360 video experiences. And the notion was that we would like to enable full learning cycles within virtual spaces meaning that we can facilitate demonstration within the virtual space. And we can also facilitate application of knowledge within the virtual space. So the learners will engage with a learning experience with an HMD and a general purpose controller, and they would select the correct answers. Then we also looked at 360 VR videos as a potential solution. Um, and this resolved in a bit of a mind shift for us um, because we were used to developing experiences which were static, even though immersive. Whereas within 360 virtual videos, there are events that happen and we had to gear the experience to events that happen within VR spaces. Um, one thing which was great about this is that you can generate empathy for the patient's experience in this particular context. So we had, we utilized Verti to create the UI and we facilitated an application and demonstration based experience. So um, when we would engage with a client and we would like to develop an immersive learning experience, it is beneficial to approach this with a framework in mind that takes into consideration logistics, learning, narrative, as well as other immersive learning restrictions. So in this we're going to run you through an immersive learning framework, which should help to facilitate discovery sessions in real time with clients so that you can take into consideration a range of, um, a range of conditions. So immersive learning framework that we will show you contains a logistics component, a techniques component, a performance capabilities component, and then a narrative structure and gamification, as well as a learning quality component. Um, and I'm just gonna unpack some of the key terms before we look at this framework in more depth. So firstly, we would like to develop performance capabilities within learners. So in the initial discussion, we discuss learning objectives and the achievement of learning objectives. With immersive learning experiences, we ultimately want to develop performance capabilities within learners. We want them to be able to apply what they learned within real world context. That's what we want to achieve. We want them to be able to think and act flexibly with what they know. So we took a performance view of understanding within the framework which we're going to run you through. Next, techniques, and this is where technology comes in, and there was an excellent comment earlier about what counts as immersive learning, where do we draw the boundary, and this is hence why we use the term techniques. The term techniques is derivative from ancient Greek philosophy, which was formulated by Plato originally and repurposed by Bernard Stickler, French philosopher of technology. And it essentially refers to any kind of extension and exteriorization of the human mind, which can be captured in advanced emergent technology, as well as in writing. And according to Bernard Stegler, uh, techniques and memory are inseparable. So we can think that if we create immersive learning experiences, that we induct students within cultural practices, meaning within cultural memory. And then narrative structures, critically important. A good immersive learning experience should have a strong narrative. So we looked at narrative according to three key concepts. Firstly, embedded narratives. 
embedded narratives are essentially contingent to conditional logic of some sort, meaning that there's a preset of predefined choices for learners. So now you can think of your articulate rise um, type of experiences, simulations, where there are a set of predefined outcomes or custom solutions that you can develop, for example, in Unity through using conditional logic um, in C Sharp or in Unreal where you use C plus. Or perhaps um, you have watched Bandersnatch um, fr from Black Mirror in which you have predefined options and that was developed in JavaScript. However, this conditional logic extends computer science and it can also be implemented in text. And this really uh, excellent example, this would be a choose your own adventure type of book. I don't know if you've read Goosebumps or any of those type of books, that's essentially what I'm referring to here. <laughs> um, and then finally, gamified narratives. Gamification essentially refers to game-based elements that are integrated within a learning experience. And this would involve game-based elements involved in the narrative structure. Okay, gamification. There was also a gamification element in our framework. So we, we divided gamification into two categories.